Hey, what's up? My name is Lucas. This is my Sprinter 170. I love to take it on adventures. Let's go take a look inside. All right, guys, this is the kitchen and we're just gonna dive right into it. This is real glass. Um, a lot of people wonder if it's real glass and it is. To not get my glasses to shake around and break, I put a foam spacer on the center glass and I glued Velcro strapping here so they don't slide out. And then coming over here is my sink. Uh, the water pump lies underneath here. You just flick that button and I have an accumulator so the water pressure is always consistent and it doesn't pulsate with the pump. I got the soap dispenser over here to the right and then a towel. I got this rack at Ikea actually and it, it works out perfectly. Holds towels, holds like little koozies and above I glued a bunch of Velcro to the bottom of jars and this can hold anything from like quinoa, pasta, rice, so on. Here I have tea. And then up here I have my upper cabinet. I have like my French press in here, my water heater, some plates, bowls, and a toaster. So stepping over here, I have my closet area. I took uh, three quarter inch walnut pieces and it was actually my first time doing this. I joined them together and then ran them through planers. Um, but anyways, so it's all real walnut throughout the van. I have my closet here. There's a mirror and it's where I hang my clothes full standing. And then down below is my drawers. The top drawer is for like silverware and uh, just accessories that I use on a daily basis. And then the rest of the drawers are for clothes. And then at the, at the very bottom, I got my pots and pans and some extra cups down here. Probably one of my favorite things in the van, and it actually was a lot for me to figure out where to put it. At first, I was going to put it in the shower, but there was no way to strap it down, and that is my toilet. Um, I just happened to have enough room to fit that underneath the sink, and it is the Laveo Dry Flush Toilet. Um, which is perfect for this van because then I don't have to deal with any water or septic or composting. It's just push of a button, seals the waste, and, and then you just sit and face that way. And then it has like a little door to separate and give you some privacy. But yeah, it, that, that has worked out perfect to me. I, I think I have like a quarter of an inch of space underneath this sink and plus I modified it to even work in the first place but yeah that has been a game changer and amazing I am Lucas I'm 22 years old and this is my second van build um, I originally got into van life uh, because uh, I was just addicted to traveling and when I was 19 I took off to Indonesia that was the first time I left the country and I just went solo and that turned into the Philippines and then it, the ball was just rolling and I tried to go to Australia for a year and that was right when the pandemic started and I was just like I have no idea what I'm gonna do so I decided to save up a bunch of money to either a buy my first house or B, buy a van. So after setting that goal, I knew I just had to put my head down, forgot about the van, forgot about the house, and I just knew that the next year was gonna be a time to disappear and put in a lot of work. On this side, I have my cooking area. It's not the biggest thing, cause I'm not a huge cooker. I just cook, eat takeout and or pre-made meals. But on our trip that we one wheeled on, we actually use this a lot. And I have a huge battery bank and it was no issue. And yeah, um, right here on top of the induction, I have this little rubber mat, non-slip, and it, it's perfect for when you open your upper cabinet and things fall out because a bunch of my friends have had jars or cans fall out and just shatter the induction 
and then it's a whole process to get a new one in. And right above here is my upper cabinet. It has a little sleep right there I gotta fix. <laughs> but yeah, I store food in here. I have like little containers. It's empty right now because I just rented out my van uh, for the first time actually on Outdoorsy. Had a great experience there. Um, yeah, up here is food and storage. My squeak. Uh, I got the salt and pepper shakers right here. Um, shout out to Emery for letting me borrow these. In this area, I also have the lights to the van. I have three different switches all on dimmers. Um, so that's right here. Just below that are a few outlets with chargers and then my Happy Jack bed lift controller, um, inverter switch, the remote for my vent fan and battery monitor. And then right up here, I have my Dometic RTX 2000. And this thing is definitely the reason why my battery bank is so big because it's a 12 volt air conditioner. And I believe on max speed, it's pulling 50 or 60 amps per hour. So I really beefed up my electrical system with 1200 amp hours of lithium. Um, and I've had no issue. I get to run this uh, whenever I want for ho almost however I want. So this has been game changer. I had my first fan, did not have an air conditioner. And lastly, right behind me is this art piece. This was just a blank black wall. And I remember every day I'd just come in here working and I would look at it and I'd be like, I was just like plotting what I was gonna do with it. But yeah, it ended up being perfect. It's like printed on aluminum. Uh, but yeah, it really just, seals the deal on the color scheme in the van like it's pretty dark and this just brings some like earthy feel to the van and that was kind of the point after meeting like all the people that build vans live in vans i just got convinced to go all out like i was my my standard raised to a different level and i ended up putting too much money into my first build and ended up with none and they just were like, why don't you just throw it up and see what happens, throw it up for sale. And actually I ended up selling it. Um, yeah, and then I wasn't really ready to buy another one because of how draining it is building vans. Um, it's very emotionally draining. And Shaden, two days after I sold my van, was calling dealers without telling me, trying to talk down dealers to MSRP and he's like I found this dealer in Fresno you need to go tomorrow he already knows everything about you and he has a Sprinter 4x4 brand new so yeah two days later after selling my van I bought this and I knew I wasn't ready to start building it um, so I kind of put it off I ordered a lot of stuff I had my layout kind of in mind but I never I never dove into this build uh, until honestly a few months ago like I owned the van for like four months I'd say before really doing anything but windows and insulation this is my shower it is the staple of the van my favorite part of the van my whole concept an idea that kicked off this layout it was to have a corner shower but not only a corner shower to have one that you walk through to the front. The reason I chose this design is because I was inspired by a few people in Europe that build vans. You, you're required to have a bulkhead behind your driving uh, separate from the backspace, and that's not a thing here. So I decided to do a corner shower that you can walk through. And that's just convenient because you don't have to open the door every time you want to come to the back of the van. I enclosed both entry points with a Nautilus uh, shower door and they just close like this and it was funny because my whole color scheme is black and just darker colors and Nautilus came out with the black color shower door uh, I think two weeks before I ordered it because I remember looking the first time and ordering it and there was no black one and then two weeks later I'm looking again and boom just like that there's a black one so I got two of those as far as the shower head, it's a Moen rain shower, and this is perfect for van life because this shower releases one and a half gallons of water per minute at a very like reasonable pressure. 
it's definitely enough to get the job done. Um, it even comes with a wand if you purchase that package. And yeah, the wand is on while the shower head's on, and that's just so you can like reach around, get your armpits, and um, very convenient there. Um, yeah, I put the shower light um, that runs on a strip around the whole perimeter of the shower, and that has an inline switch up in here, so everything is in the shower to operate it, the light and so on. The very first thing I bought in this van was the shower pan, because this was my my concept, my idea. Didn't test fit it, didn't know where the drain was going, and it just ended up working absolutely better than I could have thought. And then above me is black FRP. I was searching for black FRP everywhere, and I just couldn't find it. And I, I went, I ended up finding one of the biggest wholesalers of this kind of product in San Diego. And I called them and they didn't have it, but then I, but they said they might have some scraps. So I show up and right in the front out of like 50 scraps, this massive warehouse is an extra five foot by five foot piece of black FRP. And that just sealed the deal because it's perfect match to the shower pan and I'm huge on uh, my color scheme and that being thorough and I know everyone's wondering if this is real tile and I hate to break it to you it isn't this is vinyl tile from Home Depot and it just worked out perfectly and on this side right here is where I store all my shower products and yeah this is my bathroom area all right guys over here is my garage, a huge part in my layout and design. This closet is the exact width of the shower pan width, and that's why it's this size and flows um, from the van. Right here on this wall, I cut out, well, at first I built this wall, and then the wall was done, and I had, and then I was like, oh wait, I can't open my sliding door. So. I measured my bicep, funny enough. I stood right here with a tape measure and like measured my bicep when I reached for the door. And that is what this is. I wanted it to like curve and look aesthetic. So right here is my light switch for my uh, garage, the lights up there. And at night it really, it just brightens up the whole space. I have tons of hooks in here and that's so I can hang anything from I mean, I have first aid kits and chairs and hammocks and blankets. And, and at one point, it's hard to believe, but we actually had nine one wheels in here. And this is a one wheel. And yeah, we had nine of them stacked. We had double layers. We had the big ones in the back and the small ones in the front. And at one point, like all of them, almost all of them were charging off of my outlet that I put right here. Um, so yeah, you just run extension cords to that outlet, charge them all up. It was just, it was chaos. Ever since I finished this build, um, I've been taking it on adventures and one of the craziest ventures of my life and I've been on plenty. Um, it actually is probably the craziest adventure I've ever been on. I had seven people living in this van full time for 25 days. And for 21 of those days, we were riding down the coast from the Canadian border to the Mexican border on one wheels. And this was four of the guys, four of us guys were riding and three of our girlfriends, and I thank them so much for putting up with us and being there for us. They were driving the van and making sure the one wheels were charged and making sure that they weren't too far away from us. They were always there when we needed them. There were some sketchy situations where we had to have the van follow us. It was just absolute chaos and it was a mission. Um, yeah, we, it was funny. We, we, we thought we were going to have time to go to national parks and go on hikes. And we thought it was going to be this amazing, fun filled, like, adventurous trip but it turned into a grind and a mission and yeah it was amazing though everyone had a blast we had brands that sponsored our trip um that was rumple guru uh haver and one wheel and so on um but yeah they helped us pay for the trip because it was extremely expensive more than you can imagine especially with 
the cost of gas and one wheels and just everything, insurance, the payment on the van, like all this stuff was just expensive. So thank you to our sponsors. We took off on that adventure, took it day by day. It was a grind from 6 a.m. to dark. And then we never knew where we were sleeping, how far we were going. I just knew we had to ride. It wasn't really planned, so every day we'd wake up and be like, okay, we gotta do 80 miles today. And then some days like, we've gotta do 100 today. And then I would always get asked like, how many miles do we have left? And like, intuitively I knew we'd finish in time, but I had no clue until a week or two, or like a week before we actually got back. I had no, I had no idea, I was just one wheeling as fast and far as I possibly could. This is the back lounge area of my van. We got 81 inches of bench length here. I ended up upholstering these cushions myself. Uh, I grabbed my grandma's 1970 sewing machine. Um, I've never sewn before. I watched a video and yeah, I ended up sewing all four cushions with zippers down the middle. And I'm not gonna lie, that was easily one of the harder things I've done in my lifetime. Um, one of the harder things in the van, for sure. Yeah, right here, I have the Lagoon swivel table. And for me, it was really important for when you're standing and looking down at the van, that all the surfaces you look at as you look down all match, which is why the countertops, the floors, and the cushions are gray because it is a dark uh, color scheme and I was nervous that it was gonna be um, too dark. So when you're in here looking down, it's actually light because everything's gray. Under this bench on this side is my plumbing 42 gallon water tank. In the front is where I have my water heater, my pump and my accumulator. And then in the, in the middle section, I actually was able to fit some storage in here. Under the bench that I'm currently sitting on, is my electrical uh, and that actually spans the whole length of this bench minus the 10 inch subwoofer that is underneath the end of the bench and and up here is my sound bar that connects to that 10 inch sub and it plays surround sound audio off your phone and also connects to the projector and it has a good all around sound when you're watching a movie and like rattle the van and it's really intense just like the movie theaters but that was the idea and now let me show you where I sleep all right guys this is my happy jack it is um, almost a full queen just I had to cut off like three inches from the side with a turkey knife and yeah but it's basically a queen just don't tell anyone that it's not a queen um, yeah I added a skylight in the back and that opens up entirely you can climb onto the roof you can raise the bed and sit through the skylight at night we'll over, like watching the stars wrap yourself up in a blanket that's like huge uh, that's one of my favorite things to do and yeah it has a blackout screen as well a bug screen um, so you can run ventilation at night right over you which it feels amazing on a hot night um, yeah i also put a light switch into the side of the wall that you can only see once the bed is down. Uh, and that connects to the flange around the skylight if you wanna read at night. Right above me here is a washer that I glued with VHB tape to my ceiling slat. And that holds my Nebula projector. Just a couple more things left in the van. I have a ladder in the back that holds my spare tire that you can walk up to the roof rack and there's walkable solar up there. That is, I believe, 440 watts of walkable solar. Um, and then on the other side, I have a Sherpa and that carries my box, which I hold my pizza oven in. And yeah, just anything like shore power cables and so on. It's just extra storage in the back. And yeah, that's my van. And for the next things going on in my life, uh, in a couple weeks, actually, I start my first client build. He reached out to me. He just found me way back during my first van and followed me through this one. And now he's confident to have me build his van. So I start that in two weeks and I'm super excited. 
Um, as far as the adventures go, those will be put on hold for a minute. Uh, I really want to focus on making his dreams come true and building in the van that he wants, and that takes a lot. Um, if you're curious to follow me and my adventures and see where I go from here, um, you can follow my Instagram, and that is Lucas Revisa. Uh, I posted tons of the content about one wheeling. I'm going to start ramping it up and posting more about my van builds and my adventures. Um, yeah, and then keep your eye out for hashtag carving the coast. That is going to be the name for our YouTube video and our documentary of this whole trip. And you will just see the van throughout the whole entire adventure. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be crazy. And yeah, I know everyone's going to love it. It's just an adventure of a lifetime. I just can't stop talking about it. Thank you so much, Tiny Homes, for checking out my van and giving me this amazing opportunity. Um, I'll see you out there.